Hi, I'm Dan Costa, Editor-in-Chief of PCMag.com, and we are here on the trade show floor at Mobile World Congress 2018. We are in the Ookla booth, we are in the PCMag studio in the corner of the Ookla booth, and we are watching, we are seeing some pretty cool products come through. Uh, Dr. Yanko is here to show us what I think is one of the best PDAs here at Mobile World Congress. Um, whatever a PDA is, I think this definitely qualifies. Uh, tell us about this product, the Gemini. So, you know, so, so the PDA, Dan, thanks, Dan. The PDA, you know, it, at, um, it's, a, it's a term for the 90s, meaning, you know, personal digital assistant. And uh, it's something that people used to use to store their contacts, to store their uh, documents, to, to do little spreadsheets, to do little databases, right? And of course, you know, actually the, the PDA company was Scion mm -hmm. and uh, they made some devices called the Scion 3 and the Scion 5 and the Revo and Revo Plus. Very All passionate audience. But everybody had it, yeah. you know, and uh, it was a really, really, uh, it was a productivity device. There was no internet yet, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like the early days of the internet. Uh, very little email, just about it connected to a phone to do SMS mm -hmm. messaging, right? So, you know, so then suddenly you had sort of small keypad phones, you had WAP, and then you had the smartphone, and then you had the iPhone, right? And then, you know, everything's going to stay the same for the last 10 years. And we thought, what about if we can bring back this form factor? Because some things we're missing, you know, we're missing being able to, let's say, edit spreadsheets. We're missing able to write long documents. We're missing able to respond to emails with a long message back. Uh, we're missing just having that kind of capability around that you can do all of those things just in case you need to do them on the move. Mm -hmm. And all of that in the pocket, because you have an iPad or a tablet that's reasonably small, but it's not in your pocket. It's not pocketable, right? You have a laptop, but then you need to carry a laptop and a phone, right? So this is something if you want to be productive on the move, mm -hmm. but not need to carry all these devices, then you can have it. It's a kind of very powerful device, right? So, so the, here it is. The company's called Planet Computers. That's right. Gemini. And uh, obviously, the thing that you'll notice straight away is that it has a clamshell form factor, a micro clamshell form factor, and a full physical keyboard. Yeah, so there's a full QWERTY keyboard. So, you know, if you look at the devices, you know, they're really uh, full keyboard, and you can really fit it into your pocket. It's very, very simple. So run down the specs here. This, this will run Android. So this will run Android. It can also do dual boot Linux. Uh, we're announcing several flavors of Linux. We've announced Sailfish OS today. So with Yola announced that Sailfish 3 is running on the device, but we also have Sailfish X running on the device, which will be downloadable. That's the community edition. Then uh, we've, we're showing on our booth also Debian. So uh, very kind of vanilla flavored. Uh, most Linux people will appreciate that. Also Ubuntu des desktop running on the uh, device. And uh, we have a very early version of PostMarket, which was something that used to run on the Nokia Memo devices a long time ago uh, under the name of Memo. And has been kind of uh, nurtured by the community as well. So the idea is that it's really open that anybody can put their own version of Linux on there, right? If they want, if they want, so that's kind of the in, idea. But in the shops, it's Android 7.11. It's 64 gigs of flash, four gigs of RAM, uh, and it's a 10-core processor, MediaTek processor with with GPU support. Uh, so it's a it's a 7.11 Android phone in its kind of uh, natural form. So, and it, do, are you thinking people are going to get this in addition to their phone? Is this going to replace their phone? Uh, where do you think people are going to fall? So, I think there will be both. Um, there will be both camps. I think uh, one camp is people are really passionate about this form factor. They'll say this is going to be my only device, and they'll be they'll be using it as as their only device. And there'll be other people that will say, well, I'll use my normal phone as my hotspot, and I'll get the Wi-Fi version of this in case I need to do something more productive, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think there's kind of uh, two camps, but if we look at the audience on Indiegogo, uh, which is where we started the crowdfunding project, uh, about 80, or nearly 85% of the backers are getting the 4G version, mm -hmm. yeah. So you put it out on Indiegogo, uh, and you blew past your revenue goals. So the goals, we had low, reasonably low goals, like uh, it was, I think, 200000 or $250,000. We're now on about 1.8 million, nearly getting to 1.9 million. 
uh, I think the campaign has been kind of, uh, there was an initial campaign that raised kind of over half a million. And then once we showed the first prototypes, then it went up again. And once we showed the first uh, pre-production units, it went up again. So, you know, it's now kind of uh, at that level. Yeah. It's gotten, uh, I think a lot of it's come to when everybody likes the idea, but it's very hard to bring hardware to market. And a lot of Indigo Indiegogo hardware projects don't actually succeed. You've got a product that you actually built, you've had prototypes, and now you're actually, av it's available for sale. So, so it's, it, it was a fascinating year. So, you know, last year we were showing a mock-up of this. Mm -hmm. It was a plastic and metal mock-up. Mm -hmm. No electronics, no nothing, just a, 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 a black piece of perspex here showing the screen. You know, and now, you know, it's running several OSs and it's a real device. So it was an interesting journey. You know, this is actually running the Sailfish uh, 3 on there. Um, the, the Sailfish uh, clock on the, on the side. But, you know, in, in, in terms of, it was a real journey this, uh, this year, you know, trying to get the decision of who will actually be manufacturing the hardware, spending a lot of time making sure that the keyboard works properly, that the device closes properly, you know, that everything is really functioning well. And, uh, you know, this is kind of, this is actually, uh, you know, you can see mm -hmm. uh, the hardware that it opens and closes well, that it's... Uh, it sits great. It doesn't tip over on the on a No, so this is the, the fascinating surface. thing with the, with the design because obviously the keyboard is kind of squashed down by the top. There's some magnets that are holding the, the keyboard down. And then when you open it, the, the top kind of creates this leg and then the leg kind of creates the balance so that you have the balance and that you can type, but everything is kind of tilted as well, so it's comfortable. So that's kind of very, uh, I think, a very nice form factor. I, th I don't think we could have made it smaller with a comfortable keyboard, so, you know, that's kind of... Uh, yeah, the keyboard is, I mean, it's obviously not fu a full-size laptop keyboard, but it's easy to type on and, and a great alternative for people who miss the BlackBerry and that physical keyboard. Um, I just think we, we haven't done typing tests, but when we get one in-house, we're going to have to see how fast we can type on this compared to a BlackBerry compared to a virtual keyboard. That's right. And, and, and you'll see it's, it's quite easy to type. So there are two ways of typing. So one way is kind of holding it in your hands and you're kind of typing with two thumbs. And the other way is kind of putting it on the table and typing with two hands, literally kind of six fingers, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's uh, extremely, it, it works. We had actually five iterations of the keyboard to get to this point because uh, we were not happy four times and then we kind of finally said, yeah, that's, that's good enough now. There's also some haptic feedback, so you get a little buzz if you want when you press a key or you can get a sound when you press a key as well. Uh, let's talk about price and availability. Um, what does it cost and how, if uh, somebody wants one, how long will it take them to get one? So it's uh, 499 for the Wi-Fi only version and it's 599 for the 4G LTE version with Wi-Fi as well. Um, we currently only, it's currently only available on Indiegogo, uh, but now at retail prices because the campaign's kind of gone to that level. Uh, so uh, you can get it on there. If you get it now, you'll get your devices uh, at the end of April at the moment. So there's a little backlog on the stock because there's about 4,000 something orders through the, through the campaign already. And uh, we're kind of cu currently on the second, shipping the second thousand out. So um, that's where we're at. Well, yeah, congratulations on bringing it to market. It's very cool. I can't wait to get one to spend some more time with uh, in the labs in New York uh, when you've got more units available. Great stuff. Great okay. stuff. We'll Thanks get, for sharing it to us. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's our show for today. Dan Costa at PCMag.com. You can follow all of our MWC coverage on PCMag.com. Stay tuned for more great info.